Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, with Linux Mint 21.3, codename Virginia, the Linux Mint 21 series comes to its planned end. The third point release rounds off the series completely. What exactly Virginia has in store, what's new, etc., we will find out now. Stay tuned. Linux Mint is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu that aims to provide a user-friendly and appealing desktop environment. It focuses on the development of an intuitive user interface and the seamless integration of various software applications to ensure a pleasant user experience for both beginners and experienced users. The technical foundation of Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu LTS. That means that Linux Mint adapts the foundation and many core components of Ubuntu LTS. LTS stands for long-term support. Ubuntu itself is based on Debian, another well-known Linux distribution with a high reputation. Classic 64-bit hardware is supported only. The package format is the Debian package and the corresponding package management is APT. Here are the minimum requirements. 2 GB of memory, better 4 or more, 20 GB hard disk space, better 100 GB or more, and a XGA resolution. Linux Mint is aimed at a broad target group, especially users who are looking for a user-friendly Linux distribution. But regardless of whether you're a newcomer or a user with high demands on stability or a good multimedia support, Linux Mint absolutely focuses on the Linux desktop. What's new? Hypnotics, the TV viewer application, has been enhanced with new functions. Cinnamon Desktop 6, Experimental WLAN support, Webinator can now pair devices with QR code and new background images. If you want to get started with Linux Mint, then you have to open a browser and go to linuxmint.com. Then go to Download. Scroll a little bit down, whoops, that was too fast. Scroll a little bit down. At Cinnamon Edition, this is what I recommend you. Click on Download. And then scroll down again and choose a mirror server near to your location. And don't get confused, I recorded this video with the beta version of Linux Mint 21.3. At the time of creating this video, it is not yet released. After the ISO file is completely downloaded, I recommend you to build the checksum to prevent yourself from corrupted or manipulated software. You don't know how to do that? Not to worry. I recorded videos for this. The links are in the description. Please check this out if you don't know how to build these checksums. After you build the checksum, you can flash your boot device, either a DVD or a USB stick. In this case, I recommend you to use a tool such as Balina Etcher. Download it, flash the ISO on the device, reboot your system and then boot from the device. Then you will reach the live mode. There you can test the whole system. If you like it, open the installer and follow the screens. Let's come to the system measurement. My system occupied 9.8 GB of the disk. In terms of memory requirements, the system was content with 709 MB. The number of pre-installed packages was 2166 Debian packages. Flatpak containers are not pre-installed. At the time of creating this video, Cinnamon Desktop 6.0.1 was delivered. However, I worked ahead and we still have the beta version here. This means that depending on when you are watching the video, a newer version will most likely already be available. So don't get confused. The desktop in Linux Mint is called Cinnamon Desktop and if it reminds you of Windows 7 or Windows 10, that's probably no coincidence. Cinnamon offers a familiar concept with a similar user experience. This is intended to appeal to people switching from Windows, because in many cases they don't need to learn how to use the system. So, there is a bar at the bottom similar to the Windows taskbar. On the left side there is the menu. Next to it are quick apps pinned, so that means quick launches. In this case the file browser Nemo, Firefox and a console. You can move them away and you can also add other apps here. Newly open apps are arranged behind the quick launchers and on the right side we have system indicators and quick access, e.g. network, updates, volume, etc. So let's check with the system report. Whoops, there is an error. Yeah, like I said, it's a beta version, not the final version. 
It offers to install missing language packages and also to set up the system restore utility, in this case Timeshift. But we will skip this for now. There is also a notification for the update manager. Then here is the network tray icon, volume and a clock. If you open this, here is a calendar and on the left side notifications appear if there is an event. In my case there is nothing now, all is fine. Now let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 5.15, as browser there is Firefox, as email client there is Thunderbird, as office package there is LibreOffice and as software container there is Flatpak. Newer kernels would be available thanks to the Ubuntu hardware and Edelman stack. This means that you can currently switch from the outdated 5.15 LTS kernel to a newer kernel for instance 6.2 or 6.5. And don't get me wrong, outdated 5.15 kernel does not mean it is not supported anymore, but as a long term kernel it is not the newest available. Anyone who listened carefully earlier will know that Linux Mint has chosen Linux desktop users as its target group. This can also be seen from the pre-installed software. Around 90% of all desktop applications should be covered without cluttering up the system. On top of that, there are still little helpers that are consolidated in the Linux Mint settings. A software stack for which I really appreciate Linux Mint. It is carefully created and if you need more, you can find additional apps in the software manager. This is the App Store solution with Linux Mint. There are programs based on Debian packages as well as Flatpak software container. And now let's take an example, let's take Zoom. And you see, this is a flat pack package. Now let's take a different example. Let's say VLC, the media player. And you see, there are many results. I will click the first one, and we see again flat pack and flat hub as source. But if we click on it, there's also a system package available. This is the Ubuntu package. And you can see the version is 3016. And if we go back to the Flatpak package, it is 3019. So the Flatpak apps are usually more updated than the Ubuntu based packages. Please don't think that this is a boring version because there are no groundbreaking innovations. They are, but they are under the bonnet. Because the experimental support for Wayland will keep the developers busy for the next time or years. However, since Red Hat has announced that support for the outdated X11 display technology will be gradually withdrawn, the desktops have now to modernize. This also applies to Linux Mint with Cinnamon. The changes may be limited, but Cinnamon 6 is a well-rounded and solid version. Maybe you could have delivered Cinnamon 5.9 here and then version 6 with the debut of Linux Mint 22. At least that's how I would have done it. Now let's come to my conclusion. In general, the 21 series was a great series. The visually strongest version was 21.2 because the cinnamon themes were revised and improved. But Virginia is also a solid version that you don't have to skip. The upgrade is worth it just to get a great background images. It may sound flat, but small improvements here and there characterize this version. Linux Mint is not a distro that wants to outdo itself from version to version with innovations and new features. Linux Mint is the distro that wants to reliably support you in your work. That is Linux Mint. This is what characterizes Linux Mint. Continuity, reliability and consistency. Because when your work is your priority and you need to concentrate on it, you don't want to have to fiddle with the operating system. Then the system has to run and deliver. And that's exactly what Linux Mint does. Version 21.3 is a great final and therefore the end of the 21 series. But don't worry, the end of the series does not mean the end of maintenance. Thanks to the LTS branch, the entire Linux Mint 21 series will receive security updates from the Ubuntu substructure until 2027. The Linux Mint developers may still offer selective corrections for Cinnamon or the X apps, but the further development of the 21 series is thus successfully completed. I would like to take this opportunity to compliment the Linux Mint developers. In my eyes, this series was great. There was focused developments without throwing away everything overboard. With Linux Mint, you notice a credo that I personally appreciate. The future needs a past. The existing system is continuously improved and the substance is preserved. I appreciate this.
At this point, it's time for your input. As always, your thoughts and the opinions on Linux Mint 21.3 are greatly appreciated in the comments. To stay tuned for more videos, all you have to do is to subscribe for free to the channel. And also, I recommend you to press the bell. Then you will be notified when new videos are available. And in the meantime, you can also browse through my archive. There are several videos about all kinds of distros to discover. Thank you for the kind attention. Thanks for being my guest. I wish you a great time, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.